सभी का स्वागत है अभिनंदन है राजस्थान फोरम का छोटा सा प्रयास डेजर्ट सोल की ये कड़ी आप सब के लिए आप सब के मोस्ट फेवरेट पर्सन ऑफ जयपुर कहो राजस्थान कहो इंडिया कहो वर्ल्ड कहो डॉक्टर सुधीर भंडारी के साथ राजस्थान फोरम ऑलवेज ब्रिंग्स सम और द अदर रिनाउंड पर्सन फ्रॉम द स्टेट ऑफ राजस्थान फॉर अ कॉन्वर्जेशन ऑन अ प्लेटफॉर्म लाइक दिस राजस्थान फोरम की इस कड़ी डेजर्ट सोल की प्रस्तुत करता है श्री समेंस और इसके हॉस्पिटैलिटी पार्टनर हैं आईटीसी राजपुताना बहुत जल्द हम यहाँ पर एक बहुत अच्छी शाम एक्सपीरियंस करने वाले हैं क्योंकि हम सब डॉक्टर साहब को पर्सनली प्रोफेशनली बहुत सालों से जानते हैं एंड वी ऑल नो दैट हिज वॉम्थ हैज मेड ऑल ऑफ अस सो कम्फर्टेबल मैं जितना भी कहूँ और आप लोग जितना भी सोचे या समझे डॉक्टर साहब के लिए वो शब्द कम होंगे आई कैन आई कैन वाउच फॉर दैट सो अज राउंड ऑफ अपलॉज फॉर डॉक्टर सुधीर भंडारी जी बिफोर वी बिगिन हम लोग एक छोटी सी uh, हमारा राजस्थान फोरम का एंथम प्रिपेयर करा है राजस्थान फोरम में आपको बता दूं कि राजस्थान फोरम uh, का गठन कुछ साल पहले हुआ था और इसके चेयरमैन है पंडित विश्व मोहन भट्ट साहब को चेयरमैन है मिस्टर हरि मोहन कांगड़ जी एंड एक छोटा सा सपना कल्चरिस्ट मिस्टर संदीप भुटोरिया ने एक छोटा सा सपना देखा और इसका गठन किया सो यूज राउंड ऑफ अपलॉज फॉर ऑल दोज हु आर नॉट इवन प्रेजेंट हेयर टूडे दिस इवनिंग तो ये एक छोटा सा प्रयास तैतीस रत्न जैसे हम बोलते हैं देर आर थर्टी थ्री मेम्बर्स ऑफ राजस्थान फोरम ऑल बिलोंगिंग टू वेरियस फील्ड ऑफ आर्ट कल्चर लिटरेचर सो ये छोटा सा एक एंथम हमने प्रिपेयर किया है ये मैं चाहूंगी आप सब सुनिए और इंजॉय करिए
बारे में हमारे कल्चरल कोऑर्डिनेटर हैं सर्वेश भट्ट जी उनको आमंत्रित करती हूँ कि थोड़ा बताएं ये जो राजस्थान फोरम का शीर्षक गीत होगा ये और इसको तैयार किया है पंडित विष्णुमोहन भट्ट साहब ने इसमें पूरे राजस्थान को उन्होंने समेटा है इसमें अभी आपने सुना होगा हमारे जो तो मेम्बर हैं पद्मश्री अनवर खां मामिया वो हैं पद्मश्री गुलाबो जी ने इसमें आवाज़ दी है एला अरुण जी ने आवाज़ दी है इसमें हमारे फोरम के मेम्बर डॉक्टर मधु भट्ट तेलंग जो ध्रुपद गायिका हैं उन्होंने ये मनीषा अग्रवाल जी ने इसमें आवाज़ दी है उस्ताद मोहनुद्दीन खान साहब ने इसमें सारंगी के स्वर दिए हैं और अब इसका एक वीडियो भी तैयार हो रहा है जिसमें कि जो हमारे तीसों मेंबर्स हैं उसके हमने एक शूटिंग करके बड़ी टीम बुलाई थी बॉम्बे से और सबके अलग अलग मूड्स लिए हैं हमने इसमें तो अगली बार से शायद वो भी यहाँ पर लॉन्च हो जाएगा वीडियो तो इस तरह से पूरे एक राजस्थान का दिग्दर्शन है क्योंकि राजस्थान को राजस्थान के लिए काम कर रहा है तो इसमें पूरा राजस्थान को मिल गया और मैं डॉक्टर सुधीर भंडारी साहब का बहुत बहुत अभिनंदन करता हूँ कि आप पधारे और इतने बिजी समय में मतलब हमको लग रहा था कि हम कहीं जाते तो नहीं कर रहे हैं सर के साथ लेकिन सर का जो एकदम कूल नेचर और जो कूल बिहेवियर है उससे ही ये शो संभव हो पाया और मैं बहुत बहुत स्वागत करता हूँ हमारे फोरम के वरिष्ठ मेंबर पद्मश्री तिलक गिताई साहब का पद्मश्री राम किशोर छिपा जी का पद्मश्री शाकिर अली जी का और पद्मश्री गुलाबो जी का इसके अलावा आप सभी महानुभाव यहाँ जो बैठे हैं सभी का मैं तहे दिल से हार्दिक अभिनंदन करता हूँ और मैं अपरा जी को आमंत्रित करता हूँ कि आप आए और सुधीर भंडारी साहब से कन्वर्सेशन करें थैंक यू आगाज करें एक छोटी सी प्रेजेंटेशन एक छोटे सी ट्रिब्यूट डॉक्टर साहब के जीवन पर हमने कुछ तस्वीरें कहीं ना कहीं से चुरा ली डॉक्टर साहब माफी चाहते हैं आपके लिए एक छोटा सा प्रेजेंटेशन हमने बनाया है तो मैं चाहूंगी कि आप जरूर देखिए इसकी बचपन की फोटोग्राफ से लेकर इनकी पूरे काम के ऊपर है Congratulations, many many congratulations on the new role. And uh, before we begin, I'd like to just say that as we all know, God could not make Himself. God could not be present everywhere. So He made mothers. He could not give supernatural powers to everyone. So He made doctors like Dr. Sudhir Bhandari ji. Doctor Sir, you were the eldest child of the family. Where was your initial education? And kya aap bahut hi pampered bache the? Ya matlab you had a jaise sadharan apna jivan, you know, strict mahol, bade hone ke liye. And were there any kind of restrictions imposed on you as a child? First of all, 
Yes, thank you very much for having invited me. I'm humbled. I'm, I'm really indebted to you, Rajasthan Forum, for having given me the chance to interact with you. And you have been very kind in your words. I'm sure my wife takes them seriously. <laughs> uh, and she doesn't discount. So, thank you very much. Uh, yes, it's true. Uh, we are three, like my two younger sisters and me, and the eldest in my family. Definitely, I was a little pampered, but I would say during our times, we were never pampered the way we pampered our children and grandchildren these days. I spent my childhood with my grandfather. He'd be very strict. There has to be playing time, there has to be eating time, there has to be sleeping time. There has to be very disciplined time of listening to music. There used to be with party at that time. You cannot switch on all the time. So there was a pampering, but a lot of discipline enforced by parents. We will play outside, we will play outdoor. And I am sure there was a pampering, but a lot of discipline and simplicity in life, which is very unlike our children. If you have to get up early, you have to get up early. You have to have breakfast in time, you have to have breakfast in time. So it was a pampering with simplicity and a lot of discipline. Well, uh, you have three kids. When they were get, growing old, did they grow up with the same kind of environment, values? You also have grandchildren. So was that time, was the same way our children grew up in a different atmosphere. We as a parent were more caring than what our parents and grandparents with us. We, be, we were more uh, methodical, we take care of their schooling, their classes. I don't think my parents and grandparents bothered what were my marks in the school, whether I uh, did my homework or not, what scores I got in. They were very casual, but probably we were very careful about children, we were careful about their career, their friends, their, I think probably these days we have been very attentive to our children, which our parents and grandparents are not to us. In my case, yes, I'm a very caring father, uh, probably I'm very, uh, I think uh, I look after, I follow them, I think I've been very concerned about children and probably could be the need of our also, I think that our children are technology and gadgets. We are more important than books. You are absolutely correct. I think uh, probably they are so technosophy that at times you need to take their help. Probably they do a lot of things for you because of their technosophiness. But definitely I keep telling them, they, have, they are missing outdoors. Outdoors used to be a very integral part of our childhood. We'll cycle, we'll go to park, we'll play. Probably I've never seen my children talking about going to park and cycling and playing outside. Probably they'll be more busy with some show or what's up or something like that. So these children these days are more indoors. They're missing outdoors. And probably there was a pleasure of being outdoors, being very friendly, being very playful. And I think that definitely they miss these. But yes, the life has changed. Chahenge ki aap apne pehle 20 saal ki umr par thoda sa hume hamare saath share kariye. Especially, what inspired you to take medical, take up medical? How did your schooling and college life take place, and where did it take place? I think it's a very interesting question. My father was a surgeon. I've seen from childhood my father operating a bone. And I could observe the amount of respect, the amount of acknowledgement he commanded. He has been a very popular surgeon. He has been a very dedicated surgeon. He got Rajiv Gandhi Nation Peace Prize for his surgery. And I've seen my mother showing him all the time helping poor people. So I still remember I was in class six and I was gifted a box by someone. And in class six, I got it written on that doctor's medal. Oh, wow. 
So from class six also, I had inspiration that I'll be a doctor. Secondly, since he was a surgeon, I still remember during summer holidays, he, I used to visit him wherever he was. He was the head of the districts. I used to go to theater. I used to see him operating upon. So I was always sticker, and probably I just thought of this history. God has been very kind that I pursued my uh, schooling in biology. I was very lucky that many of my studious friends and many of my studious cousins did get into medicine, but I got into first chance. So probably that was the destiny. So I got into uh, medicine in my first school. So that way I picked it up. And uh, probably my father was the most inspiring for me that yes, I opted for medicine. Because I really observed and I really was very touched because wherever he go, I think people will surround him, talk to him. I've seen those days when my father would operate at a district hospital, which was to be a small hospital, <coughs> and my mother will make food for patients. So, that was a so that kind of beginning, that kind of childhood Dr. Saab has seen, and no wonder that, uh, you know, we can see uh, so much in you. And Dr. Saab, were you ever interested in sports? And uh, did you kind of, you know, manage your hand at sports sometime? Yes. I think uh, I had only two hobbies. There were years I did not listen any transistor or radio because I was very studious. I think for years together, I didn't hear any telephone or something. So studies used to be my prime option and the sports. Fortunately, when I was pre-medical college, I was my tennis team. I was in tennis team of my university, visit, uh, representing my science faculty. We used to have faculty, commerce faculty, science faculty. So I was in science faculty team in tennis. I got into medical college. And fortunately, studies and sports used to be my only passion. So I got a chance to represent my medical college in tennis, table tennis, and chess. So I was a very sporty person. So studies and the sports used to be the only uh, my passion. Dr. Saab, also all of us, uh, many of us would know that you've broken many records at the medical college. You got three gold medals in your final MBBS also. So, uh, how did you manage, of course, as you said that, you know, you were very studious, but at po that point of time, uh, any external coaching or, you know, how did you kind of, you know, put those hours so that, you know, you could um, get those gold medals and, you know, uh, achieve so much? Truly speaking, it's a very interesting instance which I keep telling to my children and I'll share the instance that how it impacted my son too. Probably, I never had any coaching in a school, even for pre-medical or medical. I believed in a principle that whatever you read or study, you need to retain it. I used to be so much under complex when my friends in medicine used to consult 20 books for one book for every chapter. And I had a concept that I would read one book 20 times but retain what I am reading. I never used to have any friends. I never, truly speaking, my methodology was I was a very singular person studying. While friends will study in a group, they will party, they will have coffee, they will listen to music and then continue studying, which was not my way of uh, studying. So probably I was very focused and I believe that whatever you plan, whatever you do, it has to be very thorough. And probably I followed this principle everywhere and that really paid me back. And uh, at, at all the levels, because of, like, I'll have friends in medicine and school. We have done course three times, four times revisions. It's a common saying in school. The yes. friend will say, I revise three times, I revise four times, I revise n number of times, I'm doing revision. And when I appear for exams, I'll say, I have been able to just 40 to 50 percent. But my 40 to 50 percent used to be a true 50 percent. With the people with five revision will not remain, remember anything. So that was the methodology I have uh, followed in school and college and probably 
I could do well and I think it was just a very planned focused thing so that really paid the dividends. My son, I must tell you, uh, I sent him to England to play football for Manchester United. People have been talking about uh, so much about coaching for NEET exam. He came from England and two days later was his NEET exam. He said, what do I do? Should I appear or not appear? I said, look, you need not to worry about it. If you are done thoroughly in your schools, probably you should take a chance. I was not very keen that he should join medicine. And probably the fellow was out of country for three months. He said, "My all the friends have been doing absolute coaching for last months and months. I said, try your luck. And probably he appeared and he cracked the neat. So probably I think a focused acquiring knowledge plays, plays you a lot. So probably I followed the same principle. Yes, uh, absolutely. You were very focused uh, and a uh, lot of focus on the book, but also there were many people who were focused on you because there was a lot of fans following. So, what do you have to share about that fan following? Because you have to share about that fan following. 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 Okay, it was a fun in college. In fact, medical college. Uh, People who talk, or those are good in sports, probably they have a little. But my grandfather was so strict that I was very scared of <laughs> flourishing the friend following. Even if one will come, he'll ask me, Kiska phunta, why ka, why ka. So that was the level which we had as jokes apart. But yes, it is true. I must share a true story which even my wife knows. There were few girls who were very close to me, and my few friends were very fond of those. So, in fact, there are many friends of mine who introduced, who were very close to me and finally they got connected and they got married. So, my, many of the girls used to send me cards. I would rub my name and put my friend's name who really used to write them and then they will follow it up and they got into this. So, since I was so focused in my college, probably I could not, uh, could, uh, didn't like, I had no, couldn't develop it. But yes, it was a good fun because uh, many of the boys made friendship with me. Probably they wanted a way to reach to some people. So that was a, a good feeling, good excitement that you had. Whom did you make friendship with uh, to reach to Reena Ji? How did that episode happen? Uh, I must share a very interesting story. When I was in final and because there was a debate, should a doctor marry a doctor? I was the one, along with one more, who spoke against doctor should marry a doctor and we were badly hooted and most of the people spoke for and uh, probably because it was a more of a fun, more of a thing that I always believe that you should not be from the same profession otherwise you get lost and my debate was full of jokes, that's I'll tell you how I met me in arena that a doctor got into the chamber of his wife, a doctor wife, holding both her hands, both, holding both the hands of the patient in her hand and doctor husband asked his wife, are you checking his pulse? She closes her eyes and says, no, I'm checking his impulse. I said, look, it's always a cause of misunderstanding. I said, both the people from same profession are so preoccupied that they have no time to think about it because I was in a very absorbing profession. <coughs> So I said that one doctor couple after got married, left for honeymoon. And in the flight, doctor husband remembered, my dear wife, I kept the iron on while ironing your clothes before packing. She says, don't worry, I kept the shower on so it will take care if house catches fire. <laughs> so that's the way the prof same profession makes so uh, absent-minded thing, but it's not so. I was very focused for my higher studies. Yes, for her, it's a very interesting story. Her father and my father happened to be colleague. I saw her three years before my engagement. I liked her so much, but I was not prepared to get engaged. So I proposed to many of my cousins, there's a good girl, go for it. <laughs> and after that, I went to England. By the time I came back, she was still unengaged. So I got a chance. 
I was very keen to settle abroad, but at the same time, I was very attached to my parents. Uh, my parents were very keen that I settle back, come back. So I promised that I'll come back. After I came back from UK, I wanted to settle in Bombay. Fortunately, for a short time, I was very happy in Bombay. I was working with one of the very eminent person. If you heard about Dr. B.K. Goel, who used to be sheriff for Bombay, etc. And with him, I got a lot of opportunity. In fact, we'll be surprised in first week of my attachment to Dr. B.K. Goel. I did treatment of Noshar. He took me to home. At that time, if you recollect, Nargis, that was unwell. So Dr. B.K. Goel took me to there. Like, it was a great opportunity working in Bombay. But then, my father was since in Rajasthan and at that time SMS was a name with the people like Dr. P.K. Sethi, Dr. Gangwa. Like it was his dream that my son comes back to Jaipur, Rajasthan and being only son, probably I was very comfortable listening to them. So fun, I came back here and I got an opportunity to work. Wonderful. Uh, Dr. Sap, of course, you know, we have many questions related to your medical life, but here uh, I would want to ask you that, you know, you're a professor, you're a teacher, and you're, you also practice. What is that is more close to your heart? What is that you are more close to teacher or a doctor? Truly speaking, sometimes there are strengths of this profession and weakness of this profession. <coughs> The most I miss in this profession is time. Time is not in my hand. It is so demanding and more so in our country. Two years before I happened to be in Los Angeles, one of my friends took me at a weekend church ceremony where everyone stands in a circle in a church and do confession that anything which you have done wrong in life, you confess in front of father so that God relieves you of the guilt and makes you comfortable. So I was also taken by my friend, we can judge this confession ceremony. Someone said he did committed this sin. Someone said he uh, misbehaved. Someone said I betrayed someone. So they will open up to ease up. When my turn came, I said my profession keeps me so busy that 90% time I'm not able to meet my appointments, 10% which I meet that too by accident. So this profession keeps you very busy and you are so short of time. But sense of happiness, sense of gratification, sense of good feeling which you derive, I think probably, I give an example. Probably we always, now my family is reconciled, my wife is reconciled, Initially, we used to have some discussions because of my very long working hours. But if you make the algebraic sum of what a good feelings you have, I give an example. Probably last 15 years, am I correct? I have not seen any movie for last 15 years in theatre or 20 years. Because they will go 9 to 12 or 8 hours. I will go to pick them up. In those 3 hours, I can do so many good things. And I would analyse that and especially I represent that group of hospital which is a spectrum of patients. We have the poorest of poor, very needy people, people from outside and the upper crust patient also. So sense of gratification, sense of involvement, sense of uh, good things you can do. So that is that keeps you happy. But at the same time, yes, the paucity of time, challenges, you have to compromise with your personal friend, family friend. So there's there's an algebraic sum, but it's still I rely positive calculation in this algebraic sum. So that's it. But how how and how do you manage to be so calm, 
so patient, all the time smiling. I learned all this after I got married. <laughs> <laughs> so, I think uh, probably being calm and quiet, it gives you a lot of thinking. <clears throat> There's always a difficult situation. You need to decide and probably uh, I feel that just when you are calm and quiet, probably you get an inner strength to make a conclusion, to decide. And uh, I'm sure when there are too many things to happen, too many tasking, best way is to not to react and to take the things one by one. Probably I have too many things to handle. And only way uh, I can feel uh, that being just calm, probably you can handle it better. And, uh, and that's the way I handle my life. Because sometimes she's upset that I don't react. You know, most of the time she's upset that even if she's upset, but I have no reaction. So probably I think uh, it's okay. I manage it. Actually, I can assure you that the people who are here are here, and the people who are here are here. जो आपको पर्सनली प्रोफेशनली जानते हैं उन्होंने कभी भी आपको ऊंची आवाज में नहीं सुना होगा एवरी टाइम आपसे मिले होंगे सो देर इज दैट वॉम एंड देर इज दैट स्माइल एंड इनफैक्ट जब मैं बाहर खड़ी थी मैंने किसी को बताया कि जब हमने सोशल मीडिया पे डॉक्टर साहब का क्रिएटिव डाला तो इतने सारे लोगों ने आई विश उसकी मैं स्क्रीन लेकर दिखा सकती इतने सारे लोगों ने बोला कि इन्होंने मेरे पिताजी की जान बचाई मेरी माता जी आजीवन इनकी वजह से हैं मेरे बच्चों को और मुझे कोविड से इन्होंने निकाला एंड सो ऑन क्या हम इसको अटेंड कर सकते हैं सो दैट दैट इज़ द टेस्टिमोनी एंड दैट स्पीक्स वॉल्यूम अबाउट यू दैट यू नो हाउ फॉर्चुनेट वी आर एस पीपल ऑफ जयपुर टू विटनेस सच अ ग्रेट पर्सनैलिटी Take us onto the journey of your life during these last two and a half years of COVID. मैं जो भी सवाल पूछूंगी मुझे मालूम है उसमें कुछ ना कुछ अंश जरूर वाप रह जाएगा. तो आपके ही मुंह से सुनना चाहेंगे कि ये दो ढाई साल how did you manage? What was the scenario of COVID? एक वेव फिर दूसरी वेव और अब तीसरी वेव so, how did you handle it in which way and what all went into thinking, strategies, you know, doing a lot of virtual conference with the Prime Minister, with the other, you know, ministers. How did you all juggle that? I think these were the testing times. I have a feeling, I still, this time also, thank Almighty God that they gave us opportunity and we came true to the test of time, we try to do our best. I must start <coughs> with my journey that in March 2020, when the first three COVID patients came to Rajasthan, before that we had a meeting. Now fortunately, I represent a medical college and I represent the head of the COVID management group and the strategy group. So we had a lot of moral responsibilities. When the first COVID patients came, our fear psychosis was here top, and our confidence level was very low. Even my own colleagues, like we could not point out, but they were very scared. I would say 60% people will try to be away from duties, not like to come, not like to uh, be a part of it. But then we very enthusiastically handled it. We had three challenges. Number one challenge, how to treat the patients. Number two challenge, how to create an infrastructure. And number three challenge, that we had to make a policy for all over state. When the first few patients came, we had no specific treatment of COVID available. But we wanted to create a bridge between point of no treatment and the specific treatment available. And with a lot of research, a lot of group, I have a pleasure of sharing that I have belonged to an institute which has the highest research potential 
huge number of talent and we make a big number of team for every decision taking and we made a combination of drug known as hydroxychloroquine and antiviral drugs which we use for treating first three patients and they got cured. The best moments of my life was from second week onwards one where these three patients got cured I used to get innumerable calls from United Nations, from Health Department of the White House, from all over European agencies, and they were sharing our experiences. And you must have seen hydroxychloroquine as a one drug that time was exported to US and many other countries. In continuation, I'll show you the latest drug. There is a new virus which has come, Omicron. The first most effective drug for Omicron today is a drug by Pfizer known as Paxlovid. Paxlovid is a drug not available in our country, but it is available in US. In fact, we uh, have a dear friend, Dr. Ashok Agarwal. He got me a packet of Paxlovid from Bangladesh. Last week he sent to me just for my knowledge. And a greatest sense of pride and happiness that Paxlovid is a drug marketed by Pfizer, number one drug for Omicron and the uh, COVID-19 virus. And you know, it is a two drug combination. One drug is a nirmatrelavir, a newly invented antiviral drug. And second drug combination is Ritonavir, which we use in March 20,000 at SMS. So the US Pfizer introduced antiviral drug today, Paxlovid, if you Google it, has a two drug combinations which we used. Secondly, when this uh, wave started coming and we started getting more and more patients, the challenges were to create infrastructure. And the type of infrastructure what we created, probably in Jaipur, and then we absolutely uh, shared our infrastructure awareness to the rest of the state, they were rated to the best in the country. If someone got a chance to see the infrastructure what we created, this was created in the shortest time of 30 to 40 days with a world-class infrastructure which we had the four flagship hospitals. And then we had a challenge of training our manpower, training our medicals, paramedicals and we probably did 200 virtual meetings for all over the state to percolate the treatment protocols, to percolate the treatment methodologies and we, like in SMS, have almost 1,000 faculty and 4,000 resident doctors training them all how to handle the COVID. So we extensively acted upon training manpower, creating infrastructure, making the drugs useful. I am so lucky, I am so blessed and owe all the gratitude and thanks to government that the drugs like Remdesivir, drugs like Tocilizum, which will cost you 50,000, and drugs like plasma or drugs like all the newer drugs we were made available free of cost for the people of Jaipur. And we created an institute with 3,500 padded, 500, uh, 1,500 padded at RUHS, then three more hospitals we took including SMS. So at the peak of the COVID times, we had 3,500 padded oxygenated facility with 700 beds. We used to get 20 to 25 ambulances every day from Delhi. We used to ship 5 to 10 patients from corporate hospital to our hospital. People have a craze of going to corporate hospital for the comfort level, but probably all those few people who have seen our infrastructure, probably they would appreciate that this could be the rated best in the world, what we created. <laughs> Secondly, the, our research teams are so strong that few drugs like tocilizumab we started using as early as April 2020, which was ratified by UK in November 2020. <coughs> there was a stage when SMS team approved remdesivir. We had difficult times with WHO. WHO countered our claims. Luck was in our favor, God was so kind. At one stage, we felt terribly jittery that we have been using Remdesivir, proposing Remdesivir, Times of India covered on headlines, WHO contacted it, and a week later, the US FDA with a bold letter approved Remdesivir. 
So our research teams at SMS were very strong and we were the pioneers in the country and the world to use the anti cholera <coughs> drugs. So that was the way we work today. If you look at the post-COVID, there's a situation, there was a situation of black fungus if you heard. There's a mucormycosis. 17 states in the country had black fungus. Rajasthan was number three in the number of black fungus cases. The test book says with the black fungus in the COVID, the death rate is to the tune of 30 to 40 percent. I have such a sense of pride that death rate in our institute and Rajasthan, because we created a black fungus area separately, which will cater all the patients from Rajasthan instead. Our death rate was 4 to 5 percent against the 30 to 40 percent. We were number three in the handling of black fungus and in the death we were number 17. We, I still remember, I must share a very secret. Can you believe at the peak of black fungus, in the peak of second wave, when you must have heard there was a shortage of remdesivir and infotericin, government was so kind on our suggestion, government sent the state plane few times to Bombay and Delhi to only pick up the loads of amphotericin and the remdesivir. People will get admitted in private and corporate <coughs> hospital, but for amphotericin and remdesivir, they will come to SMS or UHS. And I cannot forget that a state plane flying to bigger towns and getting the installment of the remdesivir and amphotericin free, which is given free to the people. So the support was tremendous. Second thing, one of the biggest sense of achievement in our institute was reason saving. Black fungus is a disease which knocks down your job and the loss of reason, eye is invaded. We had 150 patients with loss of reason, all age group. And can you believe we saved the reason of 140 people? Wow. At SMS, we gave a your mycosis of black from the team of 17 doctors working 24 into 7, which will have ophthalmologist, neurosurgeon, neurophysician, physician, surgeon, dental, orthodontist, ENT surgeon, like name any specialties and they will work upon and to save the reason of the people. So basically the methodology of handling our protocols and our conducting the uh, virtual meetings, training every nook and corner of the estate was very intense. That's why we could handle it so well and emotionally we are very uh, happy. There was a sense of gratification that we could control the COVID. During COVID times, we had innumerable doctors who got affected COVID. I was down with COVID in the first wave and I was suffering for 40 days. But then even it was very easy to continue working once you are yourself COVID positive, so you are not scared of it. But definitely, can you believe, it is unheard. In our institute on day one, we were doing 400 CT scans a day. And our proposal and our research paper that the CT can pick up the COVID pneumonia earlier was etchings is the best original research paper from SMS Jaipur. And we were doing 400 CT scans a day, free of cost. Like, so it was an intense handling. Could you believe in month of March and April, the second wave which created a havoc, practically everyone lost someone near or dear. We had 46,000 patients admitted with us and with the best of care was taken. So I think intense infrastructure creation, intense training, intense confidence building, Probably we could handle it back and above all there was a tremendous sense of achievement, tremendous acknowledgement and because of our kind of work, <coughs> I got chance, I got invitation to have one is to one virtual meeting with the Honorable Prime Minister. And the Government of India team came, they saw our infrastructure, our work, our outcome and as a result, I got an invitation and almost 20 minutes I had a one is to one interaction with the Honorable Prime Minister, which who appreciated all what is doing. Definitely when there is a calamity of this level, there is always some gaps. 
99% may be satisfied, one people or two people will have that, but we could manage it very well and we created a world class infrastructure. I can only say that not as a patient, but if someone gets a chance or someone in audience probably have seen our infrastructure and probably I would, the uh, latest award patient is Mandakini, I would say if she can say something that uh, probably you'll be very happy that in city we have such kind of infrastructure which is world class and we can do well. So that was a very difficult times, very stressful time. I still remember for almost one year I used to sleep on different floor. My family used to be on second floor, I used to sleep on first floor. Every night, first I'll go to my guest house, I'll take bath, change clothes and then go home. So you can imagine for one year it is happening, you are so scared that you may not infect your children, you are not infect your family and wife. Probably we did not share room for almost one year because I'll be loaded with my patients, <coughs> I assume this and that. So every evening, I first go to guest house, change my clothes, take a warm water bath, take a steam, and then go home. That too, I'll not share the room. So that used to be not only me, many of our colleagues did it same. So that was a very tough times, but we enjoyed it. And probably, only I can tell you, we got so many acknowledgements from Government of India, WHO, that innumerable people who have been coming with the management strategies, they have been appreciating that what all is being done and probably this has been done at the smallest place in the state also because we have been role model and we have been mentoring the smaller district places how to handle the COVID patient. And fortunately, I think I can share the news. It is true that this Omicron is milder one it is acting as a vaccine, it is building up the immunity level and probably by middle of March or end of March, we should have very high level of herd immunity that we should be out of it. So that's a key thing. That's a very, very good news. And uh, during COVID and there are many people who are sitting who were torch bearers like Dr. Bhandari, you know, to get COVID out of our lives in some way or the other. Uh, ek, uh, one question out of um, inquisitiveness. Hum sab ne, jo bhi par log hai, hum sab ne SMS hospital dekha tha pehle, aur aaj usko dekh rahe hai. We all thought that nothing is going to change, but SMS hospital ka to ek facelift hua hai. Wo bahut gazab ka hai. So how did you manage that facelift and uh, how was the support from the government uh, for that facelift? For a good medical management, there are two components. One is a professional opinion. I would always say that medical college hospital are the seat of talent because we had a huge number of patients. It is a teaching institute, so best opinion can be sought. But the issue is that if I give you the figures of my hospital, we have SMS as a one hospital and 14 attached of hospital. Can you believe there is a footfall of 20,000 patients per day in SMS? And another 25,000 attendants, so 45 to 50,000 patients come every day. So everything gets diluted. Few days before, we got a team from England. Having seen the Russian SMS, they said, "Do you have tube railway under hospital?" I said, "Yes," because in England you see gush gush of people in tube railway also. So that kind of thing. Now what is happening? People come to SMS, SMS consultant for taking best of opinion. But when the question of admission or intervention comes, they lock for the comfort. There was a survey that 75% prescription of admitted patient in corporate hospital or the surgical patient corporate hospital have one consultation with SMS doctor. Recently, one of my colleague's son got sick with dengue fever and he got admitted in one of the corporate hospitals. I said, what was the need of you going? No, 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 my wife got stuck 
चीज़ें तो आज दिन में तीन बार बैडशीट चेंज हो जाती है बटन दबाती है द फूड कम्स द कॉफ़ी कम्स दिस कम दिस इज नॉट पॉसिबल इन योर हॉस्पिटल सो वी टू के कॉन्सेप्ट दैट वी इम्प्रूव द इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर एंड सून आई थिंक अनदर टू वीक्स वी आर गोइंग टू हैव ए कॉरपोरेट टावर ऑफ एस एम एस विच इज ट्वेंटी फ्लो टू फ्लो टावर विच विल हैव ट्वेल्व हंड्रेड बैग्स आउट ऑफ विच सिक्स हंड्रेड बैग्स विल बी द प्राइवेट रूम्स लाइक ए कॉरपोरेट हॉस्पिटल और अ होटल एंड यू कैन हैव जस्ट ए होटल इन द एस एम एस सो दैट द कम्फर्ट विच यू लुक फॉरवर्ड विच बी अवेलेबल देयर ऑफ लॉजिस्टिक्स द फूड बेवरेजेस द कम्फर्ट एक्सेट्रा so that we are trying to create an infrastructure for cross section of society and definitely that becomes a revenue generation for poor patient this is part one of improving infrastructure but at the same time could you ever imagine today we have 49 departments last year we opened depart it is a institute where you need to have a rarest of rare disease handling we opened departments like sports medicine the palliative medicine only to take care of pain in the cancer we open traumatology and emergency there is a separate department only to handle emergency traumatology there is a separate department only to handle trauma this is rheumatology and immunology and you will be surprised you talk of urology we open a separate department for uro oncology means prostate cancer we open a separate department for pediatric urology only the urinary problem of children this year what we are planning we are proposing for an institute of ophthalmic sciences you will find another few years another shankar netral in sms the newer department which are opening this year now is fetal medicine you know the fetal assessment of a pregnant lady so that no deformed or defective child is born we are coming with a reproductive medicine for all the issues of the female reproduction we are coming with the andrology they are such rare branches in the country all the male uh, disorders we are coming with andrology so any we are coming with the critical medicine so practically we are developing in two directions developing the rare out of rare specialties in our institute at the same time improving the infrastructure which can cater to the cross section of society i have n number of patients they don't want to enter the hospital ke ek baar bahar aake dekh lijiye because they are so scared of the condition the rush so we are trying to cater that group also by creating a world class infrastructure if recently someone has seen so because of our dedicated approach because of our very sincere outcomes probably government is very kind to support us and they are also very keen to give all the possible support seeing uh, covid you will be surprised we are creating country's first institute of tropical medicine and virology no one in the country i must give you a profile of institute of tropical medicine and virology it is a institute with 1200 beds if any epidemic come whether swine flu zika covid etc it will be a five star institute with 300 bedded icu and virology means can you believe ours is the first government medical college in country who started gene sequencing we knew 3 months before that i got a omicron i got a delta i got a delta plus i got this one and we have been doing like that so we are starting institute of tropical medicine virology so that if any future pandemic comes we can handle it we can do it like that so probably uh, i'm sure there has to be multi directional development of institute professional excellence is one research is two and improvement of infrastructure what is happening there is so much of rush even if i i ask my wife she would not like to come to my hospital because of the rush she will prefer a test to be done somewhere which is neat clean tidy and something like that it's i'm just giving an example so we are creating that situation also that cross section of society comes and probably will you surprise we normally you must have heard a ct scan which is a slices of 64 at 120 my god 64 can you believe recently we have installed a ct scan of 512 slices which takes 2 seconds to do your ct scan of chest by the time the patient lies down the attendant says please get up he's baffled ki sir kya ho gaya aap kiya nahi kiya 
So that's a kind of equipment we are acquiring. Two seconds, only one and two you speak and the complete CT scan of chest is done. Today I give an example, we have a mammography machine. No one knows, world's best. It is totally computerized, you need not to go. So what I feel, the equipment development, infrastructure development, probably every surgical department is now going to have a robot, robotic surgery. Now the advantage is that probably it costs 10% of a corporate hospital cost and then we'd like to have. So basically there has to be a multi-pronged approach. So what you said, we are making a sincere effort to make an institute of excellence. Probably it is so tough because of the rush, but even that 20,000 patients come every day. It means they get something in spite of being tough there, so much of rush there because they take something back home. So that's a way and that gives you a lot of gratification and satisfaction. So probably we are able to do something. So before I conclude, uh, yes, actually father up for us. Thank you so very much, Dr. Saab. You know, we are seeing this time and thanks to you, we're experiencing this time. Uh, but two quick questions before I open for the audience. You've recently been appointed as the Vice Chancellor. What are your future plans, uh, keeping especially medical, uh, you know, development in mind and other plans? I think it's a very difficult question. I never wanted, I never looked for. Suddenly, I get a call to take charge of being as a VC. Definitely. Vice Chancellor, as a head of the University of Medical Sciences, controls all the curriculum of medical colleges of the state. We have flagship hospitals also. Probably because of my passion of upgrading the medical standards, because almost there are 36 medical colleges in the state, I have a feeling that if uh, I may be able to contribute for upgradation of medical standards, education, research. Definitely, uh, it is a big responsibility bestowed upon me. And I'm sure <coughs> primary thing will be to upgrade the standards of medical profession. And whatever best, I think I'll make my sincere efforts. We are all with you in this, absolutely. Uh, one question, you have three children. Have they taken more of Reena ji or have we taken more of Dr. Sahab? And one more additional question in this is ye sab janna chahte hain, aap kitne ghante sote hain? Basically, since Reena spends more time with children, so obviously they are quite influenced by her. <laughs> Practically they are all on her side. But uh, I'm sure they understand my plight also, and they are very considerate about my involvement and responsibilities. Regarding working hours, I have a feeling everything is in mind. When I was a medical student, PG student, probably I didn't sleep for days and days together. I can work without sleeping. Everything is in mind. Recently, my wife knows I was not well. Except her, no one knew. And I was working 24 into 7, taking almost 4 to 5 paracetamols a day. Because you cannot cut short your responsibilities. But yes, our profession is so demanding. There are two ways. You may remain connected. You may not remain connected. I think my profession is one. I always try to do things which gives me happiness. I must share a very nice joke with you. One of the patients called me uh, day before yesterday, 3 a.m. And he had some issue, I settled it down. I got three, four people working in my office. I said, Aapne mujhe phone kyun kiya? Aapne unko phone kyun nahi kiya? Ke sir, aapka staff raat ko uthata nahi, aap hi uthate ho. 
So, uh, like, I respond to every call, every distress thing, even people who are designated to help me, my all three, four PAs. He said, sir, wo kabhi ko baje phone nahi utate, but you always pick up. So I settled them down. I give you the, one of the best example, just before COVID, I happened to be in Singapore. And as per Singapore time, midnight, three o'clock, I got a call from some of the income tax commissioner's wife. Okay, sir, he's vomiting profusely. So I said, Aap aisa kariye. anything else, he said, he's perspiring also. I said, Aap immediately go to the hospital. And they went to hospital, to nearby private corporate hospital, but then there were some formalities to be done. From Singapore, I called up that private hospital. Mm -hmm. That you can do whatever you want to charge, care of me, plus look after him. The fellow had acute cardiac attack. Without formalities, without credit card, without giving advances, I just called them that up, make it care of me. And uh, he had a massive cardiac attack. He was stented midnight. I don't know what was the time here as per that. And he recovered. So probably little reassurance to the hospital that I am responsible for all the bills which you get. Otherwise, it would have been it like that. So sometimes it gives you a lot of satisfaction, a lot of uh, gratification. So coming back to a specific question, yes, I finish my day midnight, almost by two or three early morning. I finish, and I'm a very early riser, and my first half an hour has to be buzzards. Probably at the moment I get up, I tell my wife, put some best of the buttons so that by that time you are away. But yes, my day starts very early around 6, 6.30. I finish by 2. So that's it. May God give you more and more strength, more and more power. And may God bless you with all the happiness and long life. That is what all we can say. Uh, yes. It's open for interaction, of course. Uh, this is Dr. Sabne Boda. We'd like to hear from Andakni. And if there is a question in your mind, then you should ask. Yes, of course. But just so, uh, questions short and to the point. I don't need a mic to speak about Andakni at all. So I'll just leave this aside. So I had the experience, well, my parents weren't well, and that was the unfortunate part. My mother is 70 and my father is 80. And they both got COVID. My mother is a serial diabetic. And um, of course, they both uh, went under the uncle's care. And now I'll speak with the infrastructure. The infrastructure was better than any you can find in any of the top hospitals. And I have, we have been an investor in quotas from my last job. So we had absolutely top of the line care when we were admitted there. The ICU at RUHS is far superior to what you would see in quotas or in any other hospital. <laughs> About uncle, I think he's lying when he says he sleeps at 2 o'clock. He is taking round to the hospital till 2 o'clock. After which he must be reaching his home to sleep. He, again, as he said about uh, his juniors may or may not pick up the phone, they are extremely good, but yeah, if you want to get across somebody at 3.34, then of course that's him. I also want to uh, go back to the example that he said about his parents, that when his uh, father would be operating a lot of times, uh, his mom would be cooking. When Papa and Mommy were unwell and we immediately needed a concentrator, we had one at home. Guess where the second came from? His home, his personal concentrator. So this is this is about his mom sending food for the patients. This is how he is. And he hasn't reminded that it has to be sent back to anything. It's at the top of my head, but he hasn't. The infrastructure, he was talking about OPD care. If you see the infectious disease department, my mother was admitted in Vancouver two years ago, again with a lung infection. The OPD in Vancouver, and I'm not even going to talk about India, is nothing compared to the OPD he's created. It has live music, which is beautiful. You get your atmosphere there. And it's absolutely clean, magnificent. The machines, it's got that uh, negative uh, pressure environment so the bacteria doesn't flow down. It, the whole experience, I can tell you that it is, it is, it is not about India. It, it is about any place in the world. I've also been to Mount Sinai, unfortunately, for my Bua. I can't compare the facilities which he's created. I had the opportunity to see the ICU. And again, I say of the ICU, you feel like you've landed in a Hollywood movie. It's, it's not funny. I mean, I, I was scared of touching things that I would dirty them. When I'm a cleanliness maniac, I wipe my hands and wash my hands at least 100 times a day. You know? And it, it, it is so magnificent. Wow. Uh, you said something about God in the beginning, and I was telling you that yesterday, that my grandfather used to say that <coughs> I always believe in God even if you don't see him. But when he comes, when, when you need him, he will come to you in some form or the other. And that to us is uncle. Wow. And I think everybody.
everybody in the audience, we are blessed, blessed, blessed to have him amongst us because it is true that we don't see God. He comes to us when we need him. We may or may not know him. You may think that I've been a fan of him since forever, but it's only now. I was telling, I've been such a corporate person, I never use the word Dr. Saab. I don't use the word Dr. Saab. I don't use the word Dr. Saab. I don't use the word Dr. Saab. But with regards to him, since the time I've met him, I don't praise him, I praise him all the time. And I've started using the word Dr. Saab when I talk about him in third person, which is totally not me. I used to find it like really don't knock it. But when I, when I refer to him, either I can say uncle or doctor. So I can, I can never say doctor in Dari. I don't use the word Dr. Saab. I don't use the word Dr. Saab. I don't use the word Dr. Saab. I have to tell the whole audience, all of us are blessed over here. If he has touched your life, you're blessed because you've seen a little bit of God in, in person, which is impossible otherwise. So we all Thank you, serving humanity with a smile and so much of warmth. Absolutely. Please, please. And then to Mr. Singh Bhi. My dear Govind Gurbani, Dr. Saab ki jo jarni patai, usme ek chapter rahe gya, organ donation pe. इनकी वजह से राजस्थान में 200 लोगों की जान बच चुकी है और 42 ऑर्गन डोनेशन हो गए हैं भी कांग्रेस के और आगे भी सपोर्ट राजस्थान को मिलता है। To make our life easier, make our life simpler, and make our life more protected. Covid without him was impossible to be dealt, and this is what we have gone through very easily in our lives. No time, I think he doesn't sleep. He was just telling to was to make us happy, but I don't. No time I have seen one and. One, two, three, all the time, whenever I have called him, he was in the hospital only during the COVID times. So I don't know what he was saying is right when he sees. <coughs> thank you, Ruksa, for being in our lives. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Singh uh, When COVID started, I shall tell the incident, no questions for you. Just one thing, and uh, no doubt, scare was very high. <laughs> So I was at that time in the porch with him and uh, one uh, village boy came uh, running, kind of running and he was literally crying that uh, my father is inside, he is not well, I cannot see, I don't know what's going to happen, he will die without meeting all of us. Uh, how uh, He was so scared. So naturally, when you are facing this kind of calamity, there are so many things happening. It becomes very difficult for doctors to handle such grieving uh, people. So to my utmost shock, I must use the word, was whether it would be a surprise. He very calmly said, don't be worried. At that time, the uh, kind of the, what we say, uh, Yes, uh, our parents say, uh, bo, uh, those were very costly and those were very much in short supply. He simply said, I'll get you that is, uh, this issue. Uh, what is the word? PPQ. Yeah, PPQ. Yeah. So I will get the PPQ tissue. You go inside, meet him, spend time with him, and make yourself comfortable. Now, this was something while we talk about many things. This small incident shows the kind of human touch, the kind of personal touch, which is brought to a patient's, uh, uh, I mean, the, the people who are attending to our his son. It was so calm, and that is how actually he is. It's not important that how, how much he have achieved, it's important that how patient is attended. And in the same way, I would say, when on another occasion I was at hospital, a junior doctor says, in past 50 years, no such principle has come, and in the future also, such principle would not come. Those were the comments. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I speak. Well, I think in this audience here, I would be one of the person who knows to hear pretty well. You have been a Messiah yeah. for not only the state, I think other countries would be. One question which we have been bothering for a few days, which I want you to answer. The kids have not been going to school for two years now. And the new challenge, which I feel, or most of us feel, is going to be the mental illness of the kids. How are we going to address this? Because that would be a very, very big challenge. 
we have been making presentations to various cabinet meetings. Two days before there was a cabinet meeting and I was the one who strongly supported and propagated the idea of reopening the schools. In fact, this morning on the Honorable Education Minister called me and in fact he thanked me and acknowledged me the logic side here. Truly speaking, now a time has come to reopen the schools. The logic behind is the WHO has categorically identified that the transmission and the spread is not happening because of children. That this is one. UNICEF has also proposed that transmission is not happening because of children. It can be like decided now to schools to be opened up. There are n number of countries, I would say, which has number of cases more than one lakh a day, which includes Denmark, Germany, UK, and most of the European countries. They are opening schools from 24th onwards. Now, what has happened? There is a concept, Delta wave, which came in second Delta wave in April and May, was a year ago. Everyone got infected. The new concept which has come for Omicron is that it is said that avoid closed congregation, but the space seeking in the school or playing is not bad because when Omicron virus comes in atmosphere, there is a lesser carbon dioxide. And lesser carbon dioxide in air, the way children are playing in the playgrounds or schools, it makes the pH of virus alkaline and virus dies. So with WHO recommendations that children are not source of spread, UNICEF telling that children are not going to cause increase in the number of cases. And above all, all those Western world which is having number of cases they are opening. Second good news I must share with you that this Omicron, oh, I must share with you the zero surveillance. We got the, before I have to specific answer, we got a zero surveillance of the state of Rajasthan. Zero surveillance is a study which we did in every nook and corner of the state to see the antibody levels or immunity levels of the population of Rajasthan. 90% population was found to have antibodies and before the vaccination for children started, 74% children had antibodies. Mm -hmm. It means there has been subclinical infection in the children also and they stand protected. Thirdly, even if this children, uh, this Omicron affects children or adults, it is acting as a booster dose. Anyone in audience who got infected in Omicron, please get your antibody titers done. Those people who had antibody titers below, before Omicron in hundreds, now they are in thousands. So because of these three to four things, children being not source of spread, they are well protected because of subclinical infection. If Omicron happens, it is going to boost the immunity and now good number of uh, uh, children are being vaccinated because of 15 to 18 and now 12 to 14 and above all you need to make an algebraic sum of advantage of not opening school and disadvantage of psychosocial trauma to the children. So now there are more points in favor of opening schools and which was probably very well appreciated and taken. I spoke all in for opening school at least being done world over. So I'm sure it will be a good beginning and medically also, statistically also, research wise also, it looks like that, that this is going to end fade away because most of the people are going to develop heart immunity. So without vaccination, 74% children are immunity. So with vaccination, they are going to be more immune. A good news for all people at audience, there is a now pen COVID vaccine coming. PN, pan COVID vaccine coming. It means there is a saying that this vaccine will pro protect against this variant, this vaccine will protect this variant. Just a, a small piece of awareness for you. The term variation means changing the pattern of the virus. You know how many types of variations have taken place in COVID? 700 types. 695 types variation were our 
in our favor it means virus became weak <coughs> only five times they were against us because virus became a strong like delta and omicron etc so a new concept has come that the booster dose will produce so much volume of antibodies the volume of antibodies will handle any variant you got my point so a booster dose omicron infection the volume of antibodies and bodies inherent immunity that is t cell immunity will be so strong that irrespective of variation you will be able to handle it so because of vaccination because of herd immunity because of milder nature of omicron probably there all the researches are pointing towards opening of the school but yes you see i'll give you one of the silver lining of the cloud the incidence of a disease known as tuberculosis and swine flu practically became very less why because everyone is using mask tuberculosis is one which was very rampant in our country the incidence has become very less the swine flu has become very less so probably realizing the viruses in atmosphere following covid appropriate behavior but i'm sure all things are pointing towards reopening of the school which will be good for the children and i'm sure uh, i think we should be able to resume normal life as early as possible for which we are looking forward thank you wonderful thank you thank you so very much jaate jaate ek aakhri sawal jo puchna chahungi ki Uh, we've all taken uh, two two doses of uh, vaccination and they're saying ki third dose hum ko dusra jaise agar kisi ne covid shield liya ho ko vaccine le and vice versa what is your view you know anything of this kind has to be scientifically supported so far india has two major vaccines covid shield and covaxin the studies are in favor that you should take the booster dose of the same vaccine the good combination which is being well studied and researched is if you have taken two covishin or extra genetica a third booster dose of pfizer which is not available in country but many of us who are going to dubai or america so answer to your question is you should preferably take the same uh, vaccine in case if you are traveling abroad and you have taken covid shield then pfizer is the one recommended you can take those and otherwise as on today now we are going to have few more vaccines the zydus cov covax etc one good thing i like to share with you the covax in children the covax from uh, bharat biotech has been tried from 2 years on so within few weeks and months it will be available as a pediatric vaccine from 2 years onwards it is one of the best vaccines in the world you know india manufactures 60% of world vaccine consumption we have the world's biggest vaccine giving network we are the biggest producers of the vaccine and the antibody conversion of children those who are taking this covaxin is to the tune of 90 to 95% after second dose so it is a great <coughs> Thing. so recommendations will be that if possible take the same because scientific studies has been for the same vaccine except that covaxin uh taking covaxin covaxin taking covaxin i am share a very interesting instance for you recently i was traveling from dhaka to jaipur people didn't know who am i everyone around me was talking about covid and then i realized how less i know about the subject <laughs> thank you thank you so very much yes i request arvesh ji to take over and also request rishi ji mattu who's sitting there behind uh, to after arvesh ji uh, speaks to uh, formally uh, you know uh, propose the vote of thanks doctor nisham एकदम निशंत हम रोमांचित हैं और हम गर्वित हैं कि आप जैसा रत्न हमने पाया और मैं यहाँ जितने लोग बैठे हैं और पूरे राजस्थान की तरफ से आपका तरह दिल से शुक्रिया अदा करता हूँ कि आपने हमारी रिक्वेस्ट को माना और इतने बिजी शेड्यूल में से समय निकाला वाकई भाई ये शो हमारे लिए बहुत टफ था क्योंकि डॉक्टर साहब से संपर्क करना ही बड़ा मुश्किल काम था 
तो मैं चाहूँगा कि स्टैंडिंग ओवेशन डॉक्टर साहब के लिए होना चाहिए और इस मौके पर मैं डॉक्टर साहब के लिए एक ही कहूँगा हमारे शायर मित्र इकबाल साहब कहते हैं कि हम सरे राह लिए बैठे हैं एक चिंगारी हम सरे राह लिए बैठे हैं एक चिंगारी जिसका जी चाहे चिरागों को जला ले ऐसा व्यक्ति है हमारे डॉक्टर साहब का और मैं हमारे राजस्थान फोरम के चारों सदस्य पद्मश्री गुलाबो जी पद्मश्री शाकिर अली जी पद्मश्री राम किशोर जी और पद्मश्री तिलक गीता जी से अनुरोध करूंगा कि वो डॉक्टर साहब का मंच पर आकर सम्मान करें और एक बार